Hello everybody, welcome to a special edition of Traveling with Jeff and I'm out at the base here. And today we have 419 Squadron standing down. The squadron here in CFE Cold Lake, it's a lot of history that, yeah, they're, uh, that's what they call standing down the squadron. They're uh, just, I shouldn't say call it disbanding it, they're putting it to sleep I guess would be my words. I'm not uh, Air Force savvy enough to understand it, but... I'm here. There at 11 o'clock. They're supposed to be having a supposed to be having a uh, flyby of uh, planes, and there's already some taking off and landing. You've seen them practicing. I guess that's what it is. But I thought I'd come out and get a little video of that, and see a lot of people lined up. They're slowly gathering here in what we call the viewing area. You can see people over here. So. You can see, so what, I'll just give you a little background here. You can see the blue fencing there. It comes right up to the edge of the road. So what that is, is way back in there, they've already tore down one hangar. They're tearing down others. And they're building new ones for the next generation of fighters, the F-35. Now, we're not sure the trainers for the F-35, which ones they're going to be. The Americans, their trainers called the, I guess the Red Arrow, the T, hmm, I, you know what, I just don't remember unfortunately, the T-34, the T-something. And uh, Canada will probably get something similar. I would imagine they'll, you know, contract out or buy from whoever, but. Yeah, so, anyway, you can just, uh, Bear with me here, and I'm just taking some shots before it's uh, oh, about 25 minutes before they're scheduled to fly by, I think. Yeah, 20 minutes or so. So I'll give you a brief history of uh, the squadron here. Yeah, so basically the uh, 419 Bomber Squadron was formed at uh, RAF Middle uh, Milden Hall in England in 1941 as part of the number three bomber command. The squadron moved to RAF Middleton St. George when it became part of the uh, sixth uh, bomber command and then it stayed in England until 1945. The squadron operated Vickers Wellington, then Hadley Page Halifax and finally Avro Lancaster bombers during this period. It was the third RCF bomber unit to be formed in England. It started operations in January 1942, converting almost immediately to Wellington MK3s and moving north to Leeming as part of the new Six group in August of 1942. Uh, then that November, it was re-equipped with Halifax Mark IIs, which it flew for the next 18 months uh, on the night of the uh, offensive against Germany. After three quick moves, it settled at Middleton St. George in November and stayed there for the rest of its service and bomber command. In April 1944, the squadron began to convert to Avro Lancasters using the Mark 10, which was produced in Canada and flown across the Atlantic. The squadron remained continuously on the offensive until the 25th of April 1945, when it flew its last sortie. Squadron personnel flew a total of 4,325 operational sorties during the war from Mannheim to Nuremberg, Milan to Berlin, and Munich to Hanover, inflicting heavy damage on the enemy. As a result of its wartime squadron, 419 became one of the most decorated units under the RCAF during the war. Over a span of roughly three and a quarter years, it logged 400 operational missions, 342 were bombing, 53 mining excursions, three leaflet raids, and one spoof, involving 4,325 sorties. 129 aircraft were lost on, the, on those operations. Between January 1943 to March 1944, 419 was involved in over 200 sorties involving 2,400 crew operations losing 59 aircraft at a rate of one every 40. 415 men were either killed or taken POW during these 15 months, averaging four crews a month. The average crew survival rate was between two and three months when about 20 missions would be flown. And general mining operations were relatively safer missions. In particular, the attacks on German cities intensified from early October when more than 100 crews were regularly dispatched to bomb Frankfurt, Mannheim, Berlin, Magdeburg, Leipzig, and Nuremberg. During March 1944, there was much mining 
as I described earlier, but this was the precursor to the sixth bomb group's 118 crew attack on Nuremberg at the end of the month, when it was to suffer its worst loss of 13 aircraft in a single sortie. It flew back to Canada in June 1945 and was disbanded at Yarmouth Airport in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia on the 5th of September in 1945. Four nineteen was reformed on the fifteenth of March, nineteen fifty-five, as four nineteen all-weather fighter squadron, and moved to the NATO Air Division, based at baden Slosinger, Germany. Shortly thereafter, the squadron was equipped with the Avro CF one hundred Canuck. Four nineteen was disbanded thirty-one December in nineteen sixty-two. The unit was reformed at CFB Cold Lake on the second of May, nineteen seventy-five, as four nineteen Tactical Fighter Training Squadron. It was disbanded in 1995 when the CF-5 aircraft was retired. The squadron was reformed again at Four Wing Cold Lake on the 23rd of July 2000 to conduct advanced lead in training, fighter training for Canadian and NATO pilots uh, using the 9CT-155 Hawk. And that's just a brief history of, of the squadron and here and sort of what it did in World War II. And as you can see, it was uh, disbanded and then sort of reformed. So it's always on the books. It doesn't mean that they're not coming back again, uh, you know, somewhere down the road, another uh, new fighter jets, uh, you know, 20, 30 years from now may, uh, may reuse that um, 419 logo, uh, I guess you want to say name. Uh, it's got a rich history, so. You know, I'm sure that it's not, uh, it's just gone for now. I think it'll be around. So, you see, pan around here, there's people just starting to line up. It was advertised through on Facebook. Uh, the city put it on their webpage, and a lot of people are slowly starting to come around and get out of the way so people have more room to park. Just dropped my camera, fell right off my pedestal there. I just thought I'd tour around and after reconnecting. I'll just again show you how many people are here. I just talked to a couple that parked right next to me right there. That fella had worked on the uh, these hawks for over 20 years. And he said he spent a third of his career uh, working on them. And you can see the amount of people that are showing up for this sort of last flyby, I guess you want to call it. I don't know if it's there. But uh, marking an anniversary and end of an era, so. I'll just wait and see. They should be uh, any time is what we're thinking. like an F-18, one went one way, one went another, oh, right over top of us, I couldn't turn around fast enough to catch them, but they're probably uh, doing a flyby as well to say thank you to uh, the jets, Most, a lot of these uh, guys would have flown or trained actually in the uh, 419 squadron, so I'm, I'm only guessing, but I would say that a lot of the pilots that we have today with the F-18s and so on and so forth at one time or another have been to, been to 419, and if it was training squadron for NATO and any operations, that's mostly what Canada does uh, a lot, then they probably went through there, so probably means something special to a lot of these guys. I can't even see this, so I don't even know if I'm getting them in the picture. I hope I am. done a big turn and they're way over there. Now I'll zoom in. I don't know if you can see them above the trees over there. I'll zoom in a little more. 
There's looks like uh, there's four in the front, four in the front, two in the back. I sure hope I got. I'm pretty sure I got them in the picture because they're coming up right behind that tree about now. So hopefully they're just coming to the other side of that tree there. Hopefully you guys can see this. I or really can't see them well on my through my glasses. I got those tint in my glasses. And, but I'm hoping they're going to come around for another pass. So stick with me here. I'll fire it back up again if I catch them coming around. I know you guys can't see this, but I can see it with my eye there like where they're coming in at the end of the runway for a landing. So I'm hoping that they're just going to do another flyby, like kind of fly just straight down the runway. So I, that's the direction I'm pointing, sort of where they're landing. The guy's just landing over the blue fence right about now. I'll zoom in, and there's one way down. So you can see him coming around there. You might see by that, there's a blue sign there and the light just over the fence now and then the third one coming in. Oh yeah, here's... Another one was coming in for landing, so I'm just uh, showing you the runway there. Unfortunately, the blue fence is in the way, but I'm hoping he's going to do another flyby, but that may, might be all they're doing. Oh, yeah, if you look down there, right in the corner of that fence, you can see he's landed. Right, right in there, right in the corner, in the corner of the fence there. You can just see him, he's right about there. And the other one right behind him, so that might be it. It's hard to say. It's the second one landed there. You can kind of see the smoke there. Zoom in a bit more right there. 
see one, two, and see a couple more coming in behind them landing, so um, that might be it. Well, I'm going to say that that's, that that's it. As see the other ones uh, landing and they're taxiing in, so well, that just might be it. I'm just going to pan out here so you guys can see how many people actually showed up. I would say 30, 40 cars. All lined up, guy in the back of his truck there, the big camera, there's a fellow parked behind me with a big camera. So if I had to guess, I'd probably say that that's, that's it. Well, hey, thanks. You know what, this is a kind of important day for the Air Force. And the guy I was talking to there earlier, he had said, uh, yeah, you know, like they just haven't awarded sort of the uh, the contract for the, the, the trainers. Uh, as of yet, um, you know, going to be a few years, but when they do, you know, and, and squadrons pop up, they may be, uh, who knows what they're going to do. I mean, this, uh, this squadron could just not be an active right at this particular time. It may be coming back. The new fighters come in, they're going to have to train. So it's hard to say what, uh, we don't know what they're going to do. But anyway, uh, thanks very much, and I think that's probably about it. So we'll talk to everybody soon. And uh, don't forget, hit that like and subscribe, eh? You know and if you uh, would like to um, buy me a coffee, uh, they, there's a, there'll be a link uh, at the end. And here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do it, and it's the same as me. I'm not asking for money for gas, for hotels, for getting me on a flight. Ah, maybe if I get sponsors, I'll get them to pay for that. You guys, any money I get will go to charity, a local charity. And by that, I don't necessarily just mean, you know, like the food bank and everything. They'll definitely, they'll be on the list too. But I'm talking about Humane Society for animals. And, you know, if there's a young Boy Scout troop or a Girl Guides uh, group that is needing some money, uh, you know, a healthcare group, uh, anything like that, 100% of the money will go to that. I will show you guys making, me making the donation. And uh, I... I, that's all I can all I can say it's it's a it's about passing it forward so if you can help me help them that's absolutely great and thanks very much for coming out and we'll talk to you soon